recovered? Is it kind of sink or swim time now with Ruben uh, after Malcolm's injury? You know, we're still, again, it's still training camp, so we're still in the evaluation process. Uh, Ruben got first dibs today with the ones. You'll see Ray Ray get some uh, reps with the ones, so it's, it, doesn't, it, it really didn't mean anything today. He was unbelievable. Uh, looked like the Super Bowl MVP. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I don't hurt as much for the organization as I do for him and all the hard work he put in this offseason to position himself to have the best year of his career. And for that to happen to him when it happened to him, I, I feel sick for him. I'm sure you don't have to twist his arm to, to have him around, but how helpful can he be to still be around for the series? He'd be an unbelievable help. He was here today, didn't have to be. He'll be here after his surgery when he doesn't have to be. It's just the person who he is and, uh, and how he's built. At what point during the week do you decide who's going to be starting, who's going to be playing with the twos, et cetera? Uh, later on in the week uh, for Kansas City. Yeah. It'll be later on in the week. Uh, we're going to have a staff meeting here soon. Is what it, is, I mean, do you talk about the way he was playing? Like, is it possible that one person can't replace him? If you have to use multiple people in multiple roles. I, I don't want to use a cliche of next man up, but uh, it's it's going to be that you know the, the next person's got to play some great football. Uh, thirty-one other teams are going to suffer an injury that just hurts them, and thirty-one other teams are going to have to replace that person. Uh, I just like I said, I don't feel bad for the team or the organization as much as I do for him, uh, and all the work that he he did to, for this to happen. What are the main areas that Ruben uh, needs work on to, to get up to speed to be? He needs reps. I mean, he's he's still a rookie. Uh, the game is faster, the linemen are faster, they're stronger, uh, uh, the scheme is different. So he just needs reps over and over and over again, and he needs to get attacked and all the different fundamentals that we're asking him to do, he needs to get attacked in those situations just so he understands what his weaknesses are within the scheme. Ray Ray is really good in coverage, and, and Ruben's really good uh, at, 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 in terms of uh, attacking the line of scrimmage. Is there any thought of splitting that role between the two of them and sort of taking advantage of their strengths? You know, that I think they're both good in, in run and pass. To be honest, I'm, maybe I'm being biased as a, as a coach. I think they both have great strengths. Um, you know, we're so detailed in our run game that uh, I think they'll both be good in the run. They're, you know, in our, we're so specific in our coverage that they'll be, both be good in coverage. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, who's... You know, from it's just who, it comes down to production and and people making plays and doing things the right way and fundamentally being sound and and uh, and performing once these games start. Is there hesitancy to play Ruben because he could make mistakes that hurt the entire defense early on that he needs to see more of it? Yeah, he's you know he's had flash plays and he's had busts you know that a uh, common person won't notice, but at the same time he's he's been asked to learn a lot in a very short amount of time. So for Ruben, it is, it's a matter of just getting those reps. And, and what's great about him is that when he sees it once, he, he's good. You know, it's so even if he's made a mistake, he'll be able to recoup re, uh, and gather himself back up. I was saying he's better in the film room than he anticipated. Do you see this? Oh, yeah. No, he's, he's much better in the film room, much better in the playbook than, than I had anticipated for sure. He's, it, he's actually really, really, really smart. What is his ability, though, when you see that he, he makes it? A mistake and doesn't make it again. Is it just because he has a, a great memory in that thing, or just he recognizes? He, he simply that part to me is more instinctual. He has uh, linebackers. They, you know, the, the great ones have great instinctual feel for the game in the box, uh, and so when he sees it once, he just they have that feel and instincts that it just so happens when they when they see it again, they know exactly what they need to do. Kyle said those inside linebacker positions are interchangeable. I mean. I Obviously, they're a little bit different based on where you want. How, how different are they, and, and what is the learning curve when you're playing one and the other? Um, the, the learning curve really, uh, I mean, they are interchangeable. The, the Mike linebacker has to do all the communicating, the close call, talking to the defense, getting up in front of the huddle. Um, he's got all the checks, um, getting people aligned. The Will linebacker can just lay back and play football. But at the same time, the techniques that we're asking him to do, whether it be a hook drop, a uh, man coverage, they they're the same. Uh, hook drop is a hook drop is a hook drop throughout our entire defense. And so from a fundamental standpoint and a technique standpoint, they're the same. Alignments might be a little different. Um, communication might be a little different. But fundamentally, physically, it's the same. How, how's the back and forth been with you and Kyle? Obviously, he's an offensive guy, but he is interested in defense. Has, has there been a lot of communication? Or has he just said, you know what, you go run your defense? No, he's, he's, he's been fully involved. Um, he has lots of questions. And I want the feedback. 
I, I don't ever pretend like I have all the answers, so even his questions, uh, the things that he brings to my attention always spark uh, a really good study for our defensive staff to, to make sure that we're on course and doing things the right way. So he's been fully involved. Uh, you see him over there in our group install playing quarterback. He's over there manipulating the cards, trying to, trying to attack our, our scheme. So, so having him around has been, been great, and he's, he's been good. Seeing you two guys actually interact a lot to start practice, is that important to you? Or are, are players to see that the coach and the, and the defensive coordinator are locked up together? Uh, I don't know if it's important to the players. Uh, I know it's important for me, uh, like I said, just to get his feedback to make sure that we're doing things uh, in accordance with the way he wants it done. Johnson had a nice interception. I know the ball had been kind of tipped at the line, but this fourth year with the fourth coordinator, fourth head coach. What have you seen about him working with you, you know, learning a new system yet again and that, that kind of stand, sticks with you? I think Dante is a very consistent football player. Uh, I think he's very smart. I think he's technically sound. And, uh, and Dante for sure is, is someone who who definitely will not get you beat. He's gonna he's gonna be in position to make uh, to allow himself to make plays. Um, so what Dante has shown over training camp and OTAs is is his consistency, and that and that goes a long way. Jerome and uh, Chancellor James have been very physical, knocking guys to the turf. Do you encourage them to do that? No, uh, you know we don't we don't we, we want to protect our own. It gets physical out there, uh, and sometimes it just. It gets heated, and I get it, but we're, we're trying to make sure that they understand that we protect our own first. So how's Lorenzo playing, though? It seems like he's adapting pretty well. He, he's an instinctual football player. Sometimes I look at the tape, and I'm like, ah, I don't know if he can do that, bud. But he always ends up in the same spot. You know, he just he, he has a good feel. And again, he is a rookie, and he's going through, and he needs all the reps, and he needs to see it over and over again. Um, but. Uh, He's, he's been doing all right for a row. On those plays where he kind of you know, cringes at, like, where he's taking chances, where if he, gets, if he doesn't make that play, the guy's gone? You know, eventually, if he earns trust, I'll, uh, I'll believe it's calculated risk. Or <laughs> 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 but right now, he's, he, he's, he's earning it, though. He's, he, he hasn't gotten burnt yet, but it just, it's still nerve-wracking. Do you, do you plan to be on the field for games? or? Yes, sir. There's a series of plays where there are a lot of Today, um, uh, it backed up situation, you know, hard cow indicator. Uh, off offense was, I don't want to point the finger, but they were kind of struggling with the hard count today. <laughs> Are you eager to anyone in particular to watch in the preseason game on Friday? I can't wait for the whole defense. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure who that. I can't wait to see, see them against somebody new. Um, I can't wait to see us against a, uh, uh, another offense. I can't see. I can't wait. I can't wait for all. Of it. I can't wait to see us tackle. I can't wait to see us hit. I can't wait to see the violence at which we play. Is Solomon Thomas on schedule with where you guys wanted to be. Is that Tank Carradine seems to be the one most. Solomon's starting to show up. Um, again, we're going to have fresh bodies rotating in and out. So, if if being a starter is important to a D lineman, it's you know if they want that first play, we'll talk about that. But uh, in the end, we're trying to get a, a good rotation going where they're fresh and rolling. Um, where at the end of the day, it's they, they may look like they have equal reps, but in my mind, they're both starters. I know you said you're going to meet at the end of the week to decide, you know, who's going to play and how much. But knowing that you're going to have a full roster for the entire four preseason games, as opposed to like last year we had to do cuts, does that change like how much playing time certain players get? Uh, that part I don't know. Uh, again, we'll we'll talk with coach in a second. Okay. Sergeant Plosky Tart getting some work on the hill with Ray. Uh, stretches and whatnot. Uh, any update on his progress for us coming back? I believe he'll be ready sometime this week, but uh, kind of day-to-day basis, I guess. Do you anticipate him getting some time uh, on Saturday, or is that just too soon to call? Uh, I'm not sure. Up to to uh, Ferg and the training staff. Get him to use his hands more than, than he has been so far in practices? Uh, there, there's a physicality that we're trying to get all the corners to play with. Um, and Half has, had, has a great training program that he's going through, our DB coach. He's got a great plan. He's got a great system uh, that he's got great conviction over. And so it's not just him, but it's the entire group that we're trying to get uh, to, to match a style of play that, that, that at least um, resembles what we're going to be doing inside the box with the D-linemen and linebackers with our physicality. 
Uh, you know, going back, he was, uh, he's got such great feet. Um, and, you know, they, they can have contact way up the field, but in the, in the NFL, it happens quicker. You know, so there's, uh, they, they just have to learn how to use their hands quicker at the line of scrimmage. And, you know, in college, they can, they can hit all the way up the field from, from my understanding. It's been a while, but um, so, yeah, for the, entire, for the entire group, we're trying to get them to, to show a little bit more physicality at the line. Why do you wear cleats at practice? Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it goes back to, you know, uh, my days with Seattle with Coach Carroll. Uh, everybody's running. Uh, you ask the players to run, we run. And, uh, and you never know. They might ask me to run a route. I don't want to pull a groin or anything. Oh, Mark? Were there other coaches on the staff that wore cleats? Everybody. Everybody? Uh, and defense, at least. Ken <laughs> Norton, Chris Richard, Rocky. Uh, everyone had uh, Mark Juan Manuel, who's the coordinator at Atlanta. It's like a prerequisite. You never know what coach wanted. Do you run every one of the sprints that your defense has had to run, basically? A after practice? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm not running. It's <laughs> yeah. Did your staff, does your staff run with you? Uh, I don't know. I don't but you, know. you? I do. It's a good little workout. How much do you know about Austin? Um, just a little bit. Uh, we'll learn them as we go. Um, I know he had some good tape out there, and I know he's uh, – we're going to give him an opportunity to showcase his uh, stuff during preseason games. So, uh, again, we're still learning. He's got, good, you know, he's when he was here, he showed good consistency. He showed that he does have the skill set and he does know the system, uh, which was an also added bonus. So, he is a. Uh, I mean, he's played in this league, and so he can he can come in. He can help us. All right. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you, guys.